Hey guys, Hawk here. So we're going to be doing a couple of product reviews from Foam Blast, who were nice enough to send me two pairs of motors and a couple of other bits and bobs for free. Like all of my stuff that I receive for free, there will be no bias in this review. I'm kind of a harsh critic, so I apologize in the future if I'm a little bit harsh. I'm just trying to get out my thoughts. I'm not meaning anything by them. So let's get on with the review. So we'll start with the fastest first. So first up, we have a voltage meter right here. And it's not so much a meter as it is kind of a battery indicator because it doesn't give you an actual number, but it does light up with two different colors. And it is, I'm pretty sure it's meant for 2S on the packaging it came with. It had a range and it seemed like it was for 2S. So let's go ahead and snap this in here. And this is at storage. And I did check it with a full LiPo and it does light up that last one. So right when you should be pulling this out, it will drop one tick. I'm assuming it will drop another tick before you really, really want to stop. But I would go ahead and stop it after one tick down because that indicates it's at storage at the very least when it drops down another tick. And you can kind of see it has the two different color LEDs. That's kind of cool. Now, personally, I don't really like this mainly because it is not really a specific number and I'm I'm kind of detail oriented so it would kind of drive me nuts if I didn't know the exact number of my lipo. I just prefer a real voltmeter but maybe that's just me. However it does look nice. It's a little bit wider, a little bit longer than your standard voltmeter. But this is a different option that you can have and it's very high quality. Uh, I checked the back and everything, and everything looks super clean. The board's actually pretty thick, especially compared to some of the cheaper Chinese stuff that I get. So it's a high quality, and if this suits your fancy, then I think it's a decent product. But personally, I'm probably not going to use it, just because I prefer an actual number to my voltage checker. So, good product though. Next up, we have some Bulldog wheels. And so I went to go test these. I'm not 100% sure if they're a lemon. However, when I went to go put these on, they came on and off remark... I'm aware this is upside down. They came on and off remarkably easily. You can see how easily I pushed that on, and then they come off pretty easily as well, uh, with very little effort. And obviously it's a lot easier to do this outside of the cage, but when I put them on, they were so easy to slip on even compared to like stock wheels, that I wasn't 100% confident in these. Um, that being said, I did rev it up. I did test it a little bit on live stream actually, but they were vibrating so violently. I don't know whether that's because they were fitting on the shaft so loosely or because they're not balanced properly, but um, I, they were vibrating so much that I didn't feel comfortable going into a further test in fear of I was going to break something. That being said, I'm not used to vibration in the slightest because I usually run a DRS cage. And even the hooligan wheels inside of here that are very, very well balanced, uh, they start up perfectly balanced. And then as they approach their critical velocity, they start vibrating. Even, and I'm talking about the hooligan wheels. So this still does have a little bit of vibration that I'm not used to, but these right up from the get go and they were vibrating a lot when they would reach critical velocity. So um, I'm not 100% on board with these. If I pull out a pair of hooligans, now people have been complaining about the hooligans being too tight on the shafts. Personally, I would prefer them being too tight on the shaft than being too loose. I, I'm aware that it's hard to get these on, that you could break some stuff. But if you take the time and push them on properly and get them on there well, you won't have these slipping off or anything equivalent like that. So I kind of prefer the hooligan wheels still. But other than that, other than the diameter of the holes, which uh, you can actually visit, I know you guys can't, but you can actually visibly see a difference between these two holes. This one's clearly bigger. This one's clearly smaller. That's worth noting. To see something visual like that, it has to be like at least 10 or 15,000, somewhere around there. Um, but anyway, other than the diameter of the holes, these are an exact duplicate. They're the exact same thing, which you might be thinking, they copied one another. Are they someone who copied? No, both of these, both of these are copies of Artifact Gen 2s, believe it or not. I do 
I do 100% know that. So there's no fighting that copies of worker or excuse me copies of artifact gen 2 wheels but that's okay because i personally think that the gen 2 artifact wheels are the better wheels out there so the hooligans are still my preferred choice but um i don't i don't know i i really like the white i i really wish that those would have worked but they were just so loose on there and they also weren't as balanced as I wanted them to be. So in my right mind, I can't really recommend the Bulldog wheels, unfortunately. But if you want to go ahead and give them a go, if you're already in the market and you're already getting stuff from Foam Blast anyway, I'm not going to stop you. So now let's get to the main event here. This is going to be the thing that I'm going to be talking most about are the Fang revamps. These happen to be NWAR exclusive versions where they are, it's not actually anodized. I've heard people say anodized black. That's actually not the case. Uh, it's a coating, but it's not anodized. It scratches off way too easy for it to be hard oxide or anything like that. So uh, it looks like some sort of dipped something by the, the finish on the top here. But anyway, Fang revamps, they're gonna be the exact same whether you have the exclusive black or not. Now, before we go any further, if you want FPS numbers, if you want hard data, uh, if you're looking for exact blah blah blah, you, this is not the video that you're going to want to be watching. I have very high standards for things, mostly for longevity, for quality, and just to make sure that my blaster is going to last more than one round. My blaster, my personal blaster, has been going for two years now, three major events, three national events, and wars every single month, sometimes twice a month, and I've never needed to do maintenance other than cleaning the barrel of the guide. Although I did open it to try to do some maintenance once, and then I just ended up lubricating the trigger because there was not a whole lot else I could do to it. I value quality a lot, and so that is going to be the main factor that I'm looking at. We already know the critical velocity of things. We already have all of that information. Our torque numbers are way off the charts. We don't need this much torque. So I'm not really looking at FPS numbers because you guys should already know the FPS numbers. The cage and the wheels you're using is going to affect what FPS numbers you get way more than the motors. So what do I think of these motors? Well, uh, let's go compare them to something. Let's knock some things out of the park right away. These are Kronos 2s. These are 2S180 motors. Uh, these are garbage. Don't get these. They're way too hot. They have way too much torque. They get extremely, extremely hot with very little use. And if I kept this running, I guarantee I could melt this cage. So don't do that. Don't get these. I have heard terrible reports from the Neo series, specifically the Neo Hellcats, which is unfortunate because I just ordered like 12 of them, I think. I've heard some very bad reports from the Neo series. I've heard them melting cages. I've heard them burning out rather quickly. I've heard them overheating. I've heard them getting so hot that they're melting cages. And overall, I just think that they're overkill. So I've been looking for a replacement go-to motor that I can have a renewable source because I have XP-180s, but Obviously, that's not a renewable source, and sometimes I don't want to put in those motors that I can't renew again, for instance, a commission or something like that, or maybe I'm just testing out a platform. I don't want to use those. So I'm going looking for a new go-to motor, and I'm pretty sure these are going to be the thing that suits the bill. I prefer 2S. I can use 3S, but I prefer 2S. So this is already a bonus. This has neodymium magnets. This has ball bearings. Bonus, bonus. Build quality seems to be relatively high, and what I mean by that is when I first got Hellcats, the original Hellcats, this problem also transferred over to the Neo Hellcats, by the way, uh, I bought six original Hellcats, and four of them had the squeaking issue. Now, what I mean by squeaking issue is you take a 9-volt, you take your battery, and you touch it, and you hear that nice crisp sound. That's not always the case. With many, many of them, like I said, four out of six, they make a terrible, terrible screeching sound. That's not normal. While they are usable, 
that's not normal. And I don't put them in my builds because I prefer quality. Quality is the number one thing I'm looking for. I'm literally willing to sacrifice 20% power if it means I'm not going to have to ever worry about my motors. I, for the record, I'm not saying that these sacrifice 20% power. The, you're going to get your standard performance. But all these ridiculously high torque numbers that are killing these motors are completely ridiculous. I think they did a good job. I think Foam Blast did an excellent job making these. Personally, I would prefer them in a 180 format. I'm aware that people like the 130 because you don't have to cut the shell or whatever. I'm kind of the person that's like, I just want to do it right the first time. I wish someone would make a decent 2S motor and not over torque them, not completely annihilate their specs uh, for the sake of a blank measuring contest. And I wish people would stop doing that. We need to tune it back down and start focusing on a little more quality, a little more longevity, because, hey, uh, the Neo series is not great. And I'm saying that out of experience myself and other people's reports. No offense to anyone, but I, I would just prefer that. Now, uh, the rev up time could be a little bit faster, and I'm aware what the torque numbers are. I know, I know. But that being said, I feel like if you had the same torque numbers in a larger 180 format, I feel like the rev up time would be faster. Now, I know I hear what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Well, Hawkeye, the torque doesn't equal... Blah, blah, blah. I get it. I really do. I understand. What I'm saying is there is a physical limitation here. I feel... I'm saying I feel, which means I don't have any specific numbers to give. But my assumption is if you compact it, if you have a limited size, you're only going to get so much power out of it. If you have the same numbers in a larger format, you can get these to rev faster. That would be my assumption. So I wish that these were 180s so that I could get a little bit more oomph in there. But that being said, it is a non-factor at this point. You're not going to notice a thing. I have to specifically look out for the time of me revving up to these getting fully out there before... <laughs> Uh, there's, you're not going to notice on the battlefield is what I'm saying. Realistically, it doesn't matter, but I would prefer if these were 180s, but that's my only gripe. These are great motors. I like them. 2S have a relatively small battery that you can fit it in pretty much anywhere. Um, they don't kill themselves, <laughs> which is more than I can say about other motors. So I'm pretty sure these are going to be my go-to motors from here on out until we get something better, a better 2S equivalent of a 180. I really wish they would keep this color. <laughs> For the love of God, please don't make it blue or red or any... Who was thinking blue and red? Anyway, um, just stick with bl black or silver. <laughs> but I, I kind of wish they would keep this coating and just kind of like remove the uh, NWAR logo so you can keep the exclusivity. But I, I kind of hope that they, they keep this coating because they look really freaking awesome. Um, it, they, they really came out well. Foam Blast did an amazing job with these. So yeah, uh, high praise. They're good enough for me to call my main motors aside from the obvious XP-180s, which those are pretty much going to be solid as my main until the end of time, or at least I, I just don't think the market is there for people to spend you know, $20 on a single motor. Uh, I would, I would spend $30 on a single motor if it meant the quality of these, but you know, um, I, I don't think enough people out there are willing to put money down on this to invest in a motor like this. Uh, you know, replaceable brushes, silver brushes, nonetheless, the rotor on here is actually has chunks taken out of it. It's been balanced. This motor has been balanced. That's the kind of quality that I'm talking about. These have had ball bearings and neodymium magnets well before they were ever popular. A lot of people clip off these little things right here because they don't know what they do. Basically, they just reduce the EM interference or whatever. So if you have an Arduino, there's act these put out so much electromagnetic interference that it could actually mess with your Arduino. So these little caps on there prevent that. So there's no point in taking them off. 
Uh, some people, a lot of people do because they don't know what they do, but that's not really a fair comparison because we don't have those anymore. We don't have access to those anymore. So other than those, I would say that this is my preferred motor for quality and longevity because I really don't think you're going to be able to touch these in terms of longevity uh, to power ratio. You're still going to get all of that power that you have, but it's not going to be at the cost of, you know, killing your motors and annihilating everything in its path. My opinion ain't worth much, but for what it's worth, I like the Fang revamps. They're good, and you can actually see that they're moving a little bit because of these neodymium magnets, magnets a little bit. I was trying not to do that. All right, that's enough of that. Uh, so, once again, thank you to Foam Blast for sending me out all of these things. Uh, sorry about the Bulldogs, they didn't really work out the way I wanted to. I had every intention of using them, but they just didn't hold onto the shaft as well as I would have liked, and they weren't quite as balanced as I would have thought. But, everything else, A-OK -okay in my book. And who knows, maybe I got a lemon on these. I, I can't say. Anyway, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.